Now we're going to do an example using Laplace transforms to solve uh, an entire differential equation, a second order differential equation in this case. And if you look at this problem, you'll notice that we could use undetermined coefficients to solve this, um, or even theoretically uh, variation of parameters. Um, so we have quite a few options at this point, but for this one we're gonna use Laplace transforms since that what we're, that's what we're interested in at the moment. Again, notice that we're given initial conditions. That's generally true with Laplace transform problems. Um, if you weren't, you would just have values, uh, constant values that you carry throughout the problem. But it's usually more convenient to have these given um, so that we don't have to carry constants around and adjust for them. So the first step on a Laplace transform example like this is to take the Laplace transform of everything in the equation. So here we'd have the Laplace transform of the second derivative, then four times the Laplace transform of the first derivative, and so on. If you remember from the review section at the beginning of this lecture, the second derivative Laplace transform would be s squared times y minus s times y of zero minus y prime of zero. And the first y, of course, was a capital Y, the Laplace transform of y. And then for the next one, the uh, Laplace transform of the first derivative would be sy minus y of zero. And since there's a four in front of that, it's gonna be four sy minus four y of zero. And then the next term, the Laplace transform of y is just capital Y. The right-hand side, if you look here, um, we could do this kind of either way. You could think of it as the exponential with the t to the power of n modifier on it and use the derivative, or you could think of the transform of t with the exponential modifier on it. So if you think about it the second way, the Laplace transform of t would be one over s, and then adding this e to the t modifier to it would replace s with s minus a, or one in this case. So it'd be one over s minus one squared. Sorry, the Laplace transform of t would be one over s squared. I don't know if I said that. So once we have that, we can solve for capital Y. So it turns again into an algebra problem uh, to solve for capital Y. And then all we have to do is figure out how to undo to go backwards and find the Laplace transform. So we've done a couple examples of uh, inverse Laplace transforms. Um, in the last couple examples, last couple videos. So that's what we'll do once we've solved for y. So over here on the left side, we're gonna collect all the terms that have a capital Y in them. We have s squared plus four s minus five. And then all the terms that don't, we'll collect as well. So we have this one, this one, and this one. Noticing that y of zero equals one, that means we have minus s, y prime of zero is zero, so that goes away, and minus four times y of zero. And that still equals one over s minus one squared. So to solve for y, we're gonna add s and four to the other side. And then we'll divide by um, s squared plus 4s minus 5. Um, now it's going to be a little bit more convenient if we combine this all into one fraction. And again, there might be other ways to do the algebra here, but I'll show you that um, just because it will uh, make the partial fraction problem that we're going to need to do in just a minute um, a little bit easier to follow. So if we combine these, that would be multiplying this by s minus one squared. So we have one plus s plus four times s minus one squared all over s minus one squared. And then if we are solving for y, we're gonna divide all of this um, by s squared plus four s minus five.
So that will show up on the denominator here as well. And on the left side, left hand side, we just have y left. So we have this relatively complicated looking piece that we need to break down um, and simplify. Um, to do that, first I'm going to factor the denominator more. So if you factor s squared plus 4s minus 5, what you should get is s plus 5 and s minus 1. So that s minus 1 will combine with the 2 that we already have. So we'll have s minus 1 cubed times s plus 5. To do the uh, partial fraction problem on this, we need to break down uh, this denominator. Um, it's already factored, but notice that we have a repeated factor here. So if you remember, the way we handle a repeated factor is that we'll get one term for s minus 1, then one for s minus 1 squared, and then 1 for s minus 1 cubed. So we have a over s minus 1. Well, let's do the s plus 5 first to get that out of the way. We'll have b over s minus 1, c over s minus 1 squared, and d over s minus 1 cubed. So that's just the structure of the setup of a partial fraction problem when you have a repeated factor in the denominator here. So we're going to go through and, and fill out the um, partial fraction problem. Um, just for the sake of practice, I'll let you try this one on your own and see if you can get these answers. So A should be 35 over 216. B should be 181 over 216. C should be negative 1 over 36. And D should be um, negative, or 1 over 6, positive 1 over 6. So again, those are relatively complicated answers um, with big fractions like that. Uh, so it just be a little bit tedious to go through it. So I'll skip that um, for sake of uh, not getting lost in details of, of all that. But if you want to go through and, and check those answers, uh, feel free to do so. So what this works down to is that y is... 35 over 116, or 216, rather, times 1 over s plus 5, plus 181 over 216, times 1 over s minus 1, minus 1 over 36, times 1 over s minus 1, squared, and plus 1 sixth, times 1 over s minus 1, cubed. Now most of these, if we want to take the inverse Laplace transform to get y of t, little y of t, um, most of them are already set up for us. So this one here, for instance, the 1 over s plus 5, is immediately going to revert back to e to the negative 5t. This will be e to the positive 1t. This one here, we did a minute ago, um, when we took the Laplace transform of t e to the t, that's exactly what we got. So the inverse Laplace transform of that will be t e to the t. This one here is the only one that takes a little bit of work um, because it looks just like the previous one, except it has this third power on it. So that's going to be like t squared e to the t. But if you look carefully at t squared e to the t, the Laplace transform of that would be 2 over s minus 1 cubed. So we want this to be a 2 instead. And if we want that to be a 2, we need to multiply by a 1 half, so this turns into a 12. That's the only one that needs any adjustment at all with the constant coefficient. Um, so what this means is that little y of t is 35 over 216 times e to the negative 5t. plus 181 over 216 e to the t minus 1 over 36 t e to the t plus 1 twelfth t squared e to the t. And if you want a little extra practice, you could 
uh, try doing the same problem using undetermined coefficients, you should get the same answer. Um, and just as a reminder, the reason we have this t squared term here is because the uh, one of the homogeneous solutions has the same um, exponential coefficient in it as the particular solution. And so you have to go up to t squared e to the t to make that work. So you can go back and practice that. Um, so this one, the again, the idea of using Laplace transforms basically turns a differential equation into a complicated, admittedly, but uh, just a complicated algebra problem. So it basically just becomes a matter of, of testing your algebra skills on one of these questions.